And I understand that you had old-fashioned, marvelous teachers along the way while at Howard University, including your longtime family friend and instructor and mentor, Todd Duncan, a baritone who was the first black singer to join the New York City Opera and is well known for having created the role of Porgy in Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. How did your relationship with Duncan lead to your involvement in theater and opera? Well, he was almost insistent that I pursue this, mm -hmm. although I had no connotation about anything about singing, really. I had done a little singing because my mother had a very good friend who was known as Lillian Ivante. Hmm. And she was supposed to have been the first black to sing at uh, Milan's uh, uh, La Scala Opera. Was she the one who changed her last name? She yes. combined her husband and her last name? That's right. Okay. That is she. And um, so when Miss Lillian would come to visit, my mother would say, Charlotte, sing a little something for Miss <laughs> Lillian. And of course, I didn't know but two or three songs, <laughs> but I would sing. Mm -hmm. And of course, Miss Lillian was very nice and very kind, but she never said anything. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was my first exposure to really singing, mm -hmm. was for, the, for her. Right. Uh, I never really did any singing much except the Howard University Choir. Hmm. I joined the choir. Mm -hmm. Like all freshmen that are in the music, were in the music school, we came in and spent four years in the choir. So even though you were studying piano, you still had to join the choir? I did. Hmm. Everybody did who could read <laughs> the music. The idea was that those that read music were much more efficient singers, oh. and the, the director didn't have to work quite so hard <laughs> because you could read what was on the page. Right. So uh, that was... I guess the first experience. Then my senior year, mm -hmm. uh, I needed so many points, I don't remember. I'll say I needed 130 points to graduate and I had 129. I'm not sure that's what the number was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, oh, what am I going to do? Because I have to spend every spare minute I have practicing my piano for my senior recital. Mm -hmm. Uh, other than the classes which I was taking. Right. So I said, well, I'm going to try to search around for something that gives one point. <laughs> and I went into the office of the secretary at the School of Music, mm -hmm. and I said, can I see the catalog? I need a course that it has just one point. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, well, there. She started naming courses, enumerating them. Is as a public school music and there's this and violin and there's this and this this and so I said oh no I don't want to take violin uh, <laughs> that's too much work mm -hmm. you see I'm trying to find something that that <laughs> I thought would be much easier right and so she said well there's voice and I stopped and thought I said well anything else and she said well it seems from your program that you've taken all the one point stuff <laughs> so I said well and I, she said, well, you know, you have to audition for Mr. Duncan. Go and see him. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, I did. And I went to see him. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I, I said, I'd like to know if I can enroll for classes with you for uh, singing. And he said, yes. He said, but you have to come audition, sing for me. Mm -hmm. So I said, sing for him. I, I said, okay. I didn't know anything to sing, but I thought he must have had other students who walked up and had nothing to sing either. <laughs> so I didn't pay any attention to it. And when I got up to his studio, he said, all right, what are you going to sing? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, frankly, I don't know anything. <laughs> he said, what do you mean you don't know anything? You're going to take singing and you don't know anything? I said, no. <laughs> so he said, well, um, surely you know my country tis of thee. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, yes. He said, all right, sing it. And he played. My country tis of thee, and I sang it. And how did you sing it? And I sang, My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. <laughs> because that's the only way I had been singing. Even in the Howard <laughs> Choir, I was doing that. So he said, That's enough. <laughs> and so as he said, Now, he said, Let's see how high and how low you can go. And he put me through some 
some exercises and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it fascinated him uh, because I had, my father had spent so much time with recordings and in the house playing music. I had imitated one lady quite a bit because first, at first I thought it was funny. And then I got <laughs> to, to like it. It was sort of like, oh, I can do that. Mm-hmm. And I imitated a woman by the name of Lily Pons. Lily Pons. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And so my range of voice was very high. Hmm. And he was impressed. So he accepted me as a student. 